Hello creators, thank you for joining me, and welcome to the art part with Miss Colleen. Today we're going to be beginning our exploration into the art element known as space. Now when we talk about space in two-dimensional art, like the type we create with a piece of paper, we're talking about two different kinds of space. We talk about positive space and negative space. Positive space is space taken up by the subject of an artwork while negative space is the space around or between the subjects of an artwork. So if you have a piece of artwork with two circles, positive space is the space within the two circles, whereas negative space is the space around and between the two circles. The exploration we're going to be doing today is going to be kind of a, an exploration of using negative space to create the subjects of our artwork. So the materials you'll need are a piece of paper, uh, you can use a pencil if you like. I'm going to be using my crayons, um, but it's up to you either way. Uh, what we're going to do is choose, I think I'll choose four colors for my, uh, my artwork. And we're going to be using analogous colors. So use, I would say three to five different colors, but select some colors that are analogous. And uh, if you remember from our explorations of color, analogous colors are colors that are all next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, yellow, yellow green, green, and uh, blue green are all analogous colors. You could also use blue, purple, violet, sorry, blue, purple, or violet, red, violet, and red, uh, etc. You want, let's say, three to five colors that are analogous colors. So I'm gonna choose these colors because what we're going to be creating is some layers of leaves, an artwork that is different layers of leaves, as if you're looking at a very dense uh, tree branch or a bush or uh, some kind of plant that has dense layers of leaves with different colors, different light levels. So I'm going to be using my, my little green type palette here, but you can use any any colors you want if you if you want to do uh, some other colors for your leaves. It is up to you. What we are going to do first is we are going to create just uh, a, a field of color on our piece of paper. So however big you want it to be, I'm going to probably take up most of my paper here. We're just going to create a field of color. What we're going to do is choose a color that you can use uh, a very light value of. So we're using some of our different elements of art that we've explored in the past with color and value and shape, actually, in just a moment. So choose a color. I'm going to use my yellow because I know I can get a really light value with my yellow. I'm going to choose my yellow for a light value, just a... Uh, Big field of color, big space of color. Right now, we don't really have positive or negative space on our paper because we don't really have any subjects yet. So just create a nice big field of a light value of one of your colors. I would choose a color that's uh, that's on one end of your analogous colors. For example, I wouldn't start with one of your, if you line them up according to the color wheel, I wouldn't start with a middle color. I would start with one of the colors on the end. That's, that's just a tip. That's just my suggestion. So we wanna create a nice big space of color. It's very easy to color a big space like this if you do what I'm doing and go in one direction. And you can go back over if there are spots that need a little bit more color on there. Let's make sure I'm doing this in the camera so you can see what's going on. Doesn't have to take up the entire paper. So we're just doing an exploration. Just make it a nice big space. light value.
I'm gonna get some good coloring practice in today, which I know I can always use coloring practice. Build up those coloring skills. All right. I've got a nice big light value space. When you are satisfied with the uh, amount of coverage you have on your paper, the next thing you're gonna do, take that same color that you were just using, you are going to create just a few leaf shapes in that space. So using the same color, just a few leaf shapes in that space. And they can be any shape of leaf that you want. Uh, I would suggest keeping it fairly simple, uh, keeping your, your shapes fairly simple and, and all the same type of leaf shape as you go through this. So you don't want to pick something that's too hard to draw because you're going to be drawing it over and over again. And remember, this is just an exploration, so you can always try this, uh, try this exercise again in the future if you want to try some different shapes. But I would say keep it kind of simple. Keep your shapes simple, especially because you're going to be coloring around these shapes. So what we're going to do, take that that color you were just using, create some leaf shapes. Now they might be kind of hard to see, so you're gonna to wanna to use a little bit of a heavier press on there. I'm gonna make my leaf shapes nice and big. They can be going in any direction. They can be touching, they can be overlapping, they can be separate from each other. I think I'm gonna do one right there. They can be different sizes. Wherever you want to put those leaf shapes, however you want to do that. If you find some spots that you want to color a little bit more while you're doing this, that's fine too. I think I'll put one right over there. I would say at least three uh, more if you would like. And I'll do one here. That's it. Maybe one more like that. All right. Now, when you have a few of those leaf shapes, you can put this color aside and you're going to take your next analogous color. So I still have my analogous colors lined up over here. I had my yellow here, so I'm going to take the next one, which for me is that yellow green. And what I'm going to do with this is I am going to color the negative space around my leaves. So I'm not gonna go on the inside of any of my leaf lines. All of those leaves are gonna stay exactly how they are with just that first color inside them. I am going to take my second color and color the negative space around those leaves. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. You're not coloring inside those lines. You are coloring outside of the lines that you just created in that negative space. So you can take your time. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna make sure that you are not coloring inside the lines. For this exercise, you are only coloring outside the lines. This is an exercise that uh, I first learned actually as a watercolor exercise. If you've ever used watercolors in the past or if you would like to try it in the future, this is a really good exercise for practicing how to create uh, artworks using negative space. It's really useful for any kind of medium like watercolor or crayons where you can see where the, the, the colors you're using are a little bit transparent. So you can see the colors 
behind the ones that you're using. Just like I can still see that yellow behind my yellow green in all this negative space. Same is true for watercolors. Watercolors, depending on which uh, type of pigment, which type of paint, um, are a little bit transparent. And the more water you add, the, uh, the lighter those colors get. You just take some time, color around those leaves. And with our second color here, you can go push down as hard or as light as you would like. Use whatever kind of value. This yellow green always gives me a pretty light value, so that's what you're seeing here. But I'm just coloring around my leaves in that negative space. If there's any spots you want to touch up, you can feel free to go back and do that. Just remember, you're not coloring inside, because that would be positive space. Just coloring outside. All right. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to set that color aside and get my next one, which for me... Oh, no, sorry, sorry. I jumped the gun. I'm wrong. Go back. Get that one you were just using because you are going to create a second layer of leaves with that second color. So my first layer, I colored the whole thing with yellow and I drew some leaves with yellow. Put that aside. I colored all of the negative space with my second color. And now I'm going to draw leaves with that second color in the negative space. So I'm still leaving all those first color leaves just the way they are, but my second color, I'm going to draw some leaf shapes. And I would suggest draw some leaves that are behind those first leaves. So they look like they're overlapping a little bit. They look like they're behind those first leaves. They can, you can have some that are just sort of off by themselves, not touching anything, but I would definitely suggest to give the, uh, the appearance of layers of leaves, make sure some are overlapping behind that first layer of leaves. That's really going to give us that feeling that this is a thick bunch of leaves. Just take a minute, draw Draw your second layer of leaves behind your first one. You want to get them kind of close together because that's going to make it seem really nice and thick. Alrighty. Now when you have done that, then you can put your second color away and get your third color. And I bet I bet you can guess what we're going to do with this color. And you're right. We are going to color the negative space around all of those leaves. Around and between all of those leaves, but not inside. We're using our third color. Color around all of those leaves in the negative space. I really enjoy this kind of exercise that I get to just... Just relax and color. Do something a little out of the ordinary. A little unusual by coloring in that negative space. And just relax. Let my mind wander. But make sure, even if my mind is wandering, I'm not coloring inside those leaves, just coloring on the outside of the lines. You can do this with any kind of um, any kind of 
artwork that you want to create, any kind of shapes or um, scene that you'd like to create using this negative space uh, technique. If you wanted to create maybe some mountains by painting the sky behind them, you can do that. Or maybe some buildings by painting the darker buildings behind them. You can do that. The possibilities are, of course, endless. And whatever you create is up to you. If you've seen some of my other artworks, you know that I love creating nature scenes. I love drawing trees. So that's that's one reason I thought we would try this this introduction to negative space with some leaves. It also helps me feel nice and relaxed to have a nice nature scene. And you might find that the more leaves that enter your drawing, the longer it takes to color the negative space around them because you have to get all, get in all the little corners and the nooks and crannies. That's okay, just take your time. Take your time and enjoy. Enjoy the creation of your artwork. If you'd like to add some more detail onto your leaves, you can feel free to do so. If you want to add veins or different, maybe some twigs in there, or maybe maybe some nibbles from a critter, you can do that. It is your world on that paper. Alrighty. Now, I colored the negative space with my third color, so now I need to draw some leaves with my third color. So I definitely want to get some in between here. Maybe like that. Maybe there's one up here like that. Oh, excuse me. One maybe down here. Maybe one up here. Behind all the other leaves. Like so. Uh -huh. Like that. Maybe one over here. Up here. Maybe one over here. Okay, so now I put my third color aside and I get my fourth color. Maybe you are doing three, maybe you're doing five. Uh, I would I would suggest I would suggest four. That's that's my idea. It is up to you, of course. With my fourth color, I'm going to do my last coloring of all that negative space. Going to get in all the little corners, all the little nooks and crannies with my fourth color before I draw my final layer 
of leaves. Now I'm finding, and you might be finding this as well, I'm having to use a little bit more pressure to get a, a decent visible value because I have a lot of layers of crayon on this paper already. So in order for that um, blue-green to be seen, I have to press a little bit harder. But that's just my taste. If you, you, you might want a really light layer of your fourth color, or whichever color you're on, and that's up to you. But I'm just letting you know what I'm experiencing as I do my exploration, just in case it's helpful for you. be really careful to get in between here so I don't get any on my leaves not in that positive space just in the negative space if you do get a little bit of color on your leaves by accident that's okay it's just a practice and you can always do something different next time if you want Just keep on coloring that negative space. You can see where I've gotten a little, a little bit of color on my leaves. And that's okay. to go slower when you're trying to get around those little corners. And of course, as with all things, it is true of coloring as well, that the more you do it, the more practice you get, the easier it is to uh, get better at it and, and then do more of what you want with it. Practice is progress. Okie dokie. Now I could call that done if I wanted to, I could also, I think what I'm going to do is add just one more layer of leaves here. And then I'll probably want to color around those with an even darker color. But I'll just add just one more layer. When I'm doing these later layers, like the third and fourth, I like to look for any little gaps where I can add another, another leaf or another couple of leaves to make it seem more full. And that about does it. So as you can see, 
That last layer of leaves is the same color as the background, so it they, they don't really stand out very much and they don't really seem like leaves since that positive space is exactly the same as the negative space. So I will want to uh, go through and color all that negative space one last time, but uh, I think in the interest of time, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna leave it like that for, for today. So there I have my different layers of leaves in this this tree or bush or, or bundle whatever it is uh, and it gives it can give you you can use this technique to create um, different depth uh, in your artwork that to me it really looks like my darker leaves like that the green leaves and the blue green leaves really look like they're farther back from uh, farther back than my lighter leaves like the the yellow and the the lime green seem like they are closer to me so this is a technique you can use to create depth and space in your artwork that way to create um visual contrast between the the dark values and the light values there's a lot you can do uh by exploring those concepts of positive and negative space so i hope this was useful for you i hope you had a nice relaxing time creating this uh, negative space exercise artwork. And as always, keep creating and keep sharing. I'll see you next time.